Greetings one and all, and welcome to Combat Critiques. In this installment, let's have a look at the fight between Ned Stark against Arthur Dane from Game of Thrones. As we do, let's start off with assessing both sides' objectives. Ned Stark needs to enter the tower and rescue his sister. Arthur Dane has been tasked by the late king to prevent anyone from doing exactly that. But before we get into the fight proper, let's have a look at both parties here. Now I'm sure that those who are more versed in Game of Thrones and A Song of Ice and Fire lore than I can give names to these characters, but this scene does not name them other than Arthur Dane. Arthur Dane and the other man beside him are wearing plate mail, though not full sets for some reason. Look below their shoulders, there's pretty much nothing on their arms there. Their legs are similarly exposed, but that's a bit more forgivable, seeing as how trying to attack an enemy's legs tends to leave you exposed, so armor was generally less common there. They also have no arming caps despite wearing helms. Now, for those not aware, you don't put a helm directly on top of your head. Not usually, anyway. You'd put a cap made of cloth or padding on top of your head to go between it and the armor to help absorb impact. If a helm just sits on top of your exposed head, you are going to get your bell rung if you get hit on it. Ned and his men have a rather hodgepodge assortment of gear. Ned himself is wearing what appears to be a coat of plates, though he has no head protection, and his bracers appear to be a bit lacking in quality. His crew mostly have a similar setup, though some do have chainmail in addition to the coat of plates, and one guy in the back even has a helm, though the man second from the left here has no armor whatsoever. Why? You came armed and seemingly expected a fight. Why don't you have any armor? And now it begins. We can see that Arthur Dane is a fellow dual wielder here. Very nice indeed. This right here is my favorite thing ever. In the history of forever, I think about this every day. I think about this all night long. I stay awake, not sleeping, because I'm thinking about this. I've heard that in the books, his sword is a long sword, one that you would use two hands for, but dual wielding is my preference, so I'm fine with this. Interestingly, Dane drew his swords from the same side of his body that his hands are on instead of crossing his body to draw them. Just look at his companion. His friend over there is only using a single arming sword, though. No. Now it ends. Ned and his team are also all armed with arming swords, except for Ned, whose weapon appears to be more of a hand-and-a-half sword, and three of them even have shields. Now, this is a 6v2 scenario. Not good for Dane, but let's see what happens. So, the guy with no armor moves first, screaming like a wildebeest and telegraphing his strike as much as he possibly can. Meanwhile, the others just hang back, waiting for their cue. Guys, you outnumber them 6 to 2. Use your numbers advantage. Interestingly, Dane blocks this with the sword in his right hand, then cuts him with the same sword. That would have been quicker and easier if he had simply parried with his left weapon and struck with the right, but the doofus with no armor gets slashed anyway and falls over. Dane then deflects a strike from Ned, though he awkwardly crosses his body with his right weapon to do so. My man, this entirely defeats the purpose of dual wielding. Parry with the weapon closest to the incoming strike strike, then attack with your other weapon while theirs isn't able to defend them. Crossing your arms like that is also just setting yourself up to be hit, as you'd have to untangle your weapons before you can react. Really, it just looks like Arthur Dane just doesn't feel comfortable using his left weapon. We can also see that he's just twirling his weapons around, which for some reason keeps Ned and his friends at bay. Fancy flourishes are good when you're not in a fight, keeping you accustomed to your weapon's weight distribution but not so much in a real fight. Uh. 
We then have a shot from far off, and we can see that one of Ned's boys is down, while he fights Dane, and another fights Dane's companion, but the other three are just standing around. You might want to do something before another of your friends dies. These are King's Guards, after all. They are supposed to be good. One of Ned's crew does an absolutely horrid spinning shield bash, which misses and left him completely exposed to the enemy, who didn't capitalize on how his opponent just presented the back of his unprotected head to him. Instead, though, the Kingsguard lightsabers his blade all the way through the coat of plates, the chainmail underneath, the man's body, then back again through the chainmail and coat of plates on his back. Really? His head and neck were exposed, and you went with this? More than that, this guy doesn't even use his shield, which would easily have saved him, and the King's Guard simply stands there for several moments yelling while his sword is lodged in his enemy. <laughs> This is the perfect time for the others to rush him. He can't do anything until he extracts his weapon. We then cut back to Ned and Dane, the latter of whom alternates between flourishes and only using one weapon to block or strike. Sir, you have two weapons. Stop only using one at a time. He then proceeds to strike with both swords from the same direction at the same time. Kind of defeats the purpose just a little bit. But somehow this staggers Ned, though Dane doesn't press his advantage. Instead, his companion then attacks Ned, though he telegraphs into an overswing that an 80-year-old grandmother would be ashamed of. This lets Ned stab him through the throat, which similarly has no armor. You would think that troops elite enough to be selected for the King's Guard would have better gear than this shabby kit. Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Now it's a 4v1. Very bad odds indeed. Ned's forces do at least surround Dane, though most of them haven't done anything thus far. Dane assesses his situation, keeping his blades pointed at his enemies. That's good at least. Too many times choreographers make characters put their weapons in weird, inconvenient positions that would just leave them vulnerable. The point of the weapon is to keep it between you and your opponent so that it both protects you and threatens them. Dane then goes against that by flourishing again. Stop. That's when they should have rushed you. Two attack him at once, from the front and his right side. He manages to block them, though he crosses his weapons again and does a bizarre little hop while doing so. Ned and the remaining guy simply stand there, waiting until the first two stumble for some reason before moving in. Ned actually tries to strike, but his friend over there gets cold feet after Dane changes the angle of his attack. I don't really like how Dane dropped down like that. If he'd been rushed, then he'd have been taken down to the ground and killed. For that matter, why didn't he and his now-dead friend use the tower to their advantage? They could have faced Ned and his gang one at a time. Instead, they just stood around in the open while at a numbers disadvantage. Ned and his team then foolishly give Dane an opening to fall back through, which he takes forcing them to attack him from the front and sides as opposed to from all sides. One of Ned's men gets between Dane and the camera, so it's difficult to see exactly what happens, but Dane then rushes one of their number, forcing him onto the defensive and falling back. Dane crosses his weapons again, and just look at how far this guy winds back. Oh wow, that's atrocious. But now, all of Dane's opponents are in front of him, and they're not using their numbers advantage at all. Dane even performs an X-block, which I'm not a fan of. You don't need both of your weapons to block a single one. That defeats the point of dual wielding. 
Dane then kicks one man over while flourishing again, and Ned's group make no effort to attack him while he was exposed. This gives Dane the opportunity to do a complete 360 degree spin while they're too scared to approach him, and thus he ends the man who he just kicked. Now it's a 3v1. I would also like to point out that a throat wound like that is not an instant death like media portrays. That wound would take several minutes to kill the victim, who would not be having a good time at all. That is a terrible way to go. Ned and one other guy then try to rush Dane, while the guy with the head wrap shuffles along in the background. Dane keeps crossing his weapons, but at this point I've already stated how bad of an idea that is. You don't want to be like this. This is disgusting. This is awful in every way. If I could kill it, I would. But I legally can't. The actors then move between Dane and the camera again, which then quickly cuts so that we can't see exactly what's happening. But when we get another good look, it appears as though Dane cut one man's arm as he drops his shield a few moments later. We didn't get a good look, so it's difficult to say. Ned and the other man are making wild and uncontrolled swings and thrusts, making it easy for Dane to deflect them. Dane then catches his opponent's weapon between both of his, which is a bit unnecessary, but he does force the man between himself and Ned, preventing the latter from striking him while he executes the first man. Two v one now. This fight was supposed to make Arthur Dane look unstoppable, but really it's just made Ned and his guys seem like chumps. They don't look like they have any clue what they're doing at all. Ned and the remaining man try to attack Dane at the same time, but Ned quickly gives up and Dane finally demonstrates proper dual wielding technique. Look at this block encounter, that's what I like to see. Admittedly, this is also a lightsaber-like move, going through everything on this man, but so be it. Similarly to when Dane's companion killed the other man, this was Ned's chance to attack while Dane had a weapon lodged in the enemy. He still has a second weapon, so it isn't a guaranteed hit like the first instance, but it's still an opening. Dane even has time to pause and push his blade further into this guy. Now this is a 1v1, and Ned clearly realizes it. He has no chance against Dane. I do like how the actors portray this moment. Ned is clearly both enraged and realizing that he's out of his depth here, while Dane is perfectly calm. For him, this is just another Tuesday. Both then flourish, but Dane then decides to put his right weapon into a reverse grip. There's a reason why our ancestors didn't go into battle with their weapons held like this. It nerfs every conceivable thing you'd want, like range, range of motion, power, all of it. That only becomes viable for very short blades at very close range. Here, it's a bad idea. Ned then telegraphs, and Dane could have killed him right here if he hadn't been holding his other weapon in a reverse grip. Ned's subsequent strikes are all telegraphed, and Dane isn't having to put in much effort at all to block them. He even spins, exposing himself completely. Maybe he had the reverse grip to taunt Ned, showing that he could still beat him even while deliberately not giving it his all and still winning. After the spin, Dane leaves himself exposed with his weapons splayed out to his sides. If Ned had lunged forward, he could have attacked his exposed neck. <laughs> Instead, Ned falls back, not even attempting to counter as Dane wails away at him. These aren't even particularly good strikes. Dane is just trying to overwhelm him with the sheer number of them. Ned eventually decides to push back, though Dane simply blocks his attacks with one sword at a time while not countering. Maybe he really is just trying to taunt him. <laughs> Ah! 
Interestingly, Ned then makes use of his bracers here to stop Dane's sword. Unfortunately, in this shot, it looks like the actors missed their marks, as it's just hitting cloth here, while in the next, it's positioned on the Vambrace. And this is another reason you don't cross your weapons, Dane. If you'd been doing this properly, you could have killed Ned several times by now. Dane then does manage to hook his sword into Ned's and disarm him. That was a nice touch, though Ned did have the perfect opportunity to stab him here. But Mr. No Armor was in fact not dead, as he manages to approach Dane from behind and stab him in the neck. It amuses me to no end that the guy with no armor somehow survived, yet those who had some had their opponent's weapons go through them like cardboard. So this grants Ned the victory, even if he was outclassed. Honestly, this fight was shot in a way so that you couldn't quite tell what was happening when it was at full speed, but slowing it down makes this so much more apparent. Dane wasn't even all that great. Ned and his men were just not very good at all. Overall, this fight was fun to watch, but it could have been put together a little better. But I would like to thank you for watching. What did you think of this fight? Leave your thoughts in the comments below, leave a like if you're so inclined, and subscribe to see more. And may you all have a weapon in each hand.